Yeah, all right, and welcome, welcome, welcome to whatever Papa Stash channel you find yourself landing on. Again, we are here with session extraordinaire Tim Pierce. Thank you. Thanks for driving up the coast to the Hot Valley. Yeah, it's just beautiful, though. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I mean, come on. So, I got to hammer this in one more time. We got, I just always got to say it, but full blown living session legend, and he's going to teach you some tricks that'll make all of you sound that much more professional. Yes, I will. And they're easy, right? It's not they that are hard. easy. And it's, it's like simple, simple stuff. One really of those is. things you can use over, you know, a bunch of different styles, right? Right, that's right. Two different styles in this particular yes. uh, concept we're a doing. Two for two. <laughs> all right, so also check out Tim's links down below. He's got some amazing channels, awesome stuff. Check it out Thank for you. sure. It shows him like in the session, just doing some amazing, I mean, they're just. Yeah, I've got some sessions, some lessons, some other stuff. Please, yeah, it appears. Check it out. All right, let's get to it. So what we're showing here is by playing rhythm fills over a G chord, a D chord, and a C chord, we can make it sound rock and country. And then with a slight shift in our touch and the sound of the guitar, we can make it sound 60s and mellow and Motown and soul and R&B with literally the same kind of stuff just a couple of tweaks we have a radical shift in genre so works out really well uh, the way I started this thing was with a G chord and I've got the treble pickup on so it's making the amp squawk and it's kind of got a country kind of stonesy sound and I'm I'm hitting the guitar hard too I like to use kind of a soft pick sometimes because I I have a tendency to strike too hard and it kind of it kind of it kind of keeps me honest. So our first riff is um, over over a G chord and I hit the G chord I just pluck the bottom of it. And then I strike the top of it. And you know your left hand is here on the third string of the third fret going across all six strings and then we take this kind of E shape and we make our G bar chord. These two fingers are on the fifth fret, fourth and fifth strings, and then the third one is here on the third string on the uh, the fourth fret. And I pound it twice on the bottom end. I hit the top part of the chord, and then I walk up into this kind of thirds kind of thing. And what this is is the third finger on the low E string, going up from the fifth to the seventh fret. Slide up. That gives me my third kind of sound. And then the index finger barred across two strings, the fourth and fifth strings on the fifth fret. And then I toggle between those two. So one more time. Let's review this. And with the right hand, I do this little pickup. This little quick pickup that gives it kind of a snappy sound. And then I move on to the D chord, which is index finger, fifth string, fifth fret, and then the bar of the third finger across the second, third, and fourth strings on the seventh fret. And I do the same kind of strike with my right hand, like two down strokes on the low string, and then a big strike on the three string. And then I do kind of a, uh, a repetitive thing, which is a double stop again. So I take my index finger on the seventh fret on the second and third string, and I bar across those two. And then I just hammer with the third finger on one of the strings. It's the third string up to the ninth fret. So that's a really pretty kind of rock country or R&B thing, depending on how your tone is. So I hit that. And then I go to the next string over, and I hit it again, and I've just toggled over, doing a double stop from the second and third string to the uh, third and fourth string, and I do exactly the same thing. So I repeat, and then I take it over to the fourth and, and fifth string one more time. So let's review that. And that can either be rock or country. They're kind of both the same at this point. And then I finish out this phrase by staying here 
Once again, my index finger is on the fourth and fifth strings uh, on the seventh fret, and I do a hammer-on pull-off to finish out the phrase, and I take my little finger and hit this high D note here, which is on the sixth string on the tenth fret. So that last piece of this phrase is Let me review the whole series. I'm going to do it really slow. G chord. Third walk up. And I'm set up naturally to grab this D chord with the index finger on the fifth fret. And then I do this repetitive thing where I walk down. And land there. Moving on to the third chord, it's really simple. We were at the D chord up here, you know, with your index finger on the fifth string, on the fifth fret, and then your third finger on these three strings on the seventh fret. We're just sliding this down. And it goes from a D chord to a C chord. You've probably done that. And that's our new spot. So we'll strike this the same way we, we struck the D chord. And then we do a similar thing that we did on the first chord, and we do the third that little, this little thirds riff, uh, but uh, for the C chord. And what it is is your index, index finger on the fourth and fifth strings, and you've got it barred across here on the fifth fret, and you hammer. And then you slide your index finger over to the next two strings, the adjacent ones, the third and fourth strings, fifth fret, and you do this kind of seesaw. It's pretty cool. See how it's barred here on the 4th and 5th strings? And then you move it over. And we just did that on the first chord. So it's kind of just everything is shifted over one thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat from the top. See that move right there? And then we go to the D chord. And then back down to the C chord. That riff just moved over, and then we're ready to land back on the G chord. One more time, just a hair slower. Okay, now we're about to finish out the phrase. I play a G chord that's really simple, it's just two notes. What? Two fingers. It's not two notes, it's two fingers. It's my third finger on the low E string at the third fret, and then it's my little finger on the first string at the third fret. And I'm using the flesh of the third finger to mute the A string. So I'm getting a Keith Richards-y kind of Stones-y five note chord. I love the way, the way that one sounds. Literally, I've got a dead string, but nobody knows it because the flesh of this finger is blocking it. I strike that. And this phrase is pretty cool. I walk up, it's kind of country, a little bit rock too. I use the open strings, the second and third string, and I do a hammer on with my second finger, the second fret, and then my first finger on the first fret, and I hammer on, which is a really cool thing. And then I slide it up, and I slide it back down, and I pull off both of these strings, which I'm not picking, and this is a really cool thing if you haven't done pull-offs that much check it out I walk up I pick and with these fingers I pull them both off pulling down and that actually picks the open string notes and then to finish out this phrase I take my second finger fourth string second fret do another pull off. And then I move it to the next string, which is the fifth string. Pull off again. And then I strike my G chord. My five note G chord that I love so much. So I'm ready to do the whole thing again. Okay, so the way I 
did the second half of this and turned it into a 60s soul R&B mellow thing is I switched the pickup from the treble pickup which has that more brash tone I switched it to the neck pickup and I kind of did it on the fly I struck the G chord and then I simply started again but with a softer touch and playing staccato things that, that I want to show you is in order to make something staccato I use the flesh from all of my fingers to kind of mute the strings just above the frets just so you get just just the front edge of the note and then open air and that's a really beautiful thing in music and it, it's it's some Something that takes you a little while to learn sometimes if you're just used to kind of strumming out chords, but you take your hand and just gently silence all the strings after you play the chord. It's really an effective musical thing. And I do that several times in the second half of this piece when I turn it into more of a soul, mellow Motown kind of thing. Mute. I mute each one of these the same way. So you play the, the, the phrase that we learned, and you're just using your hand, whatever string, whatever fingers are available, gently on top of the, the, the actual strings just to mute the sound. Come back down here on the C chord. Mute. And so there's an example where you're, you're taking exactly the same musical content and just by picking harder and having a more aggressive sound, you're taking it from rock and country and stonesy into mellow, jazzy, smooth R&B. Becomes. Do that again. And if you really like the R&B style stuff, which uh, I really do, um, a lot of guitar players do, I'll show you a couple more licks that are in the key of G. Um, let's go up here, kind of to the top of the neck a little bit, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of use this G chord as our the basis of what we're looking at. We're gonna go up into the kind of the third this position here, which is it's G major and E minor. Um, your index finger is kind of be going to be on the twelfth fret in this kind of zone, and I'm going to do a classic kind of R and B. Uh, it's it's kind of sixths, fifths, and sixths with two strings together. Check out this slide though. I'm going to take my third finger on the twelfth fret, strings four and five. I'm going to slide up, and then I'm going to take my index finger, the next two strings over, the third and fourth strings, twelfth fret, and I'm going to slide it up then drop it back down. This is a classic riff that I've played so many times from Motown. And what you want to try and do is make sure that everything is smooth and legato and connected and there's no gaps in between the notes. So check it out. Third finger sliding up fourth and fifth strings on the 12th fret. And then without any gaps switch over to your index finger on the third and fourth strings 12th fret. Slide it up and drop it back down. And you want to have enough strength in your fingers so that the notes sound as you slide up and they have equal volume. But don't press down so hard that you get tripped up or your hand cramps. That's the key with guitar is to apply as much pressure as needed to get the job done but not too much so that your hand cramps. But that is a classic R&B riff. And I'll show you one more and this is in the key of G also. We're going to drop down with your index finger on the 8th fret 2nd string. That will be our anchor. And then we'll move our 2nd finger over to the 4th string 
on the ninth fret. And that's basically the three and one of a G chord. This is part of a G major chord. And we're going to walk up. So our next move is to take the third finger, second string, tenth fret, and our second finger, fourth string, tenth fret. Grab that, and then slide that up two frets. Simple. So check this out. And I'm choosing to use a pick and a finger because it's a classic kind of sweet move. You can pick them if you, as long as you're muting the G string with the flesh from the second finger. You do it two ways with the right hand. You can use the pick and the, and the third finger. Or no, it's the second finger. And then just slide this back down. And one of the keys to this little move is to go and s pick and slide. So in other words, you're not picking at the destination, you're picking at the beginning of this phrase. And then walk down simply like that. So there's two really, really cool class, classic, classy? <laughs> classic R&B phrases. And in the key of G. So now I'm just going to drop these riffs in on the second half of the series of chords. Yes! Now, was that not freaking awesome? I mean, thank you. You're welcome. I mean, you just you got it down. He's my hero, if you been guys doing, haven't been found doing out. A while. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be Tim. It's awesome. Yeah, you were seven and I was 19 when that particular record came out. So exactly. You are younger. So. Exactly. Got a few years to go, yep. young man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's like all the excuse that I needed. I have more years to go. Yes! So check out Tim's stuff again down below. I watch it all the time. It's amazing. And it just, you get to see how music's made and, and how a man like Tim actually is a lot of what you're hearing in the background. So Thank check you. that out. Thank you as always for joining the family here. There's like 130,000 of you now on all the channels. Check out the channels over That's there impressive. too. No, you're impressive. <laughs> All right, I'll catch you next time.